What's going on guys? What's cracking? Uh, let's go ahead and just look at this real quick. It's already in the picture. We already know. Look at this. It's beautiful. This light doesn't do it justice. These lights are super, super bright, but this, this color is literally matches a Tiffany blue box perfectly. Like it looks, you put a Tiffany blue box to that, which I had a picture. Uh, if I can throw it up here, I'm not sure if I have it still, uh, it, but it matches it uh, perfectly. Literally perfectly. Um, I was so happy Travis did to match this and some people have already asked because I posted this up. Uh, about the letters, that's not a decal. That each individual symbol here, every letter is painted on. So he masked off for every little bit of this and painted that. And look how good that is. There's a couple pieces of dust on it. Sorry, it is a dirty garage, so it is getting somewhat dirty out here. But it's going in under base, so it doesn't matter. But it's beautiful. Uh, the powder coat came out great too. Now, another thing I went ahead and started doing was putting the uh, injectors and everything back in. Now, if you guys don't know, she'd be like, Ryan, you're using a stock side feed, stock injectors? Yes. The reason for that is, again, I'm going to be running a stock ECU. This is for my wife. She doesn't need a lot of power. Like, yeah, I know you guys think saying it, it's my car, but she's going to be driving this nine times out of ten, and I want it to turn on. I need the AC to work. I need the heat to work. And she doesn't need to hear a long crank time. It just needs to run. Uh, with 440cc injectors, um, I should be able to make 300-ish, maybe close to 400-ish horsepower. Uh, I don't need a lot for her, and this is going to be fun. We're also going to be running a stock Aristo transmission, uh, so that's limit that that limits us to a point. Uh, I think we can probably make around 400 on that trans. I'm being told don't ever, and I mean ever, launch on that trans. So yeah, I'm pretty happy with all that. Powder coat looks great too. Uh, I am waiting for JT Barish again. You the man, you the man. Uh, bear boost. So what we're gonna be doing here, we're gonna be putting titanium studs and uh, nuts on this side of the manifold too. So like we have over here, how we have the TI studs and nuts, we're gonna be doing it on the intake side. We're also gonna be doing titanium uh, cover bolts and for the actual uh, valve cover itself too. I'll be listing all that too once I get pricing for you guys. It's going to be probably a week or two, so once I get that, I'll list pricing. Uh, as of right now, it's about around half of what the rest of the market is doing. That's correct. Half the price for titanium studs and bolts. Uh, I don't know how he's doing it, but he's a freaking madman. Is able to get all this titanium stuff super cheap and still make money. I don't care how he does it. I'm just stoked about it. Now, one thing I want to show you, I'm going to actually take those covers off here. I just throw them on there. Uh, I have to put these gaskets in yet, right? So I need to take this off before I scratch these all up. I should probably put these in the basement, to be honest, uh, just to keep them from getting scratched, even though it is... I always forget. So here's one thing I want to mention, too, before I get over to this. I, I love that my powder coater said this. He's like, you got to remember, this stuff, powder coating was never designed to be this beautiful thing. Powder coating, originally the purpose of it was to be corrosion resistant. It was supposed to, you know, you were supposed to, instead of painting it, you would powder coat it. It fuses with the metal. It's much stronger, much more resistant. It was never meant to be this beautiful item. Uh, now that it's gotten into automotive and all these other things, people are trying to make it beautiful. Uh, it's much harder to lay than what you think. It takes time and takes skill. Like the stuff that had I done on that car compared to this is way nice. This is way nicer, right? Uh, that was done by a backyard guy and it looks like it was done by someone in their backyard in their oven where this looks 10 times better. But even still, it's never like, 100% perfect. It's not going to be like paint. Um, I think there is some big powder coaters out there that do a damn good job, but even those I've seen in person and they're never, never perfect. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Some people get their stuff and they're like, well, why isn't it like this? Why isn't this perfect like this? Like even stuff like this, look, this is all good. Like that's dirty there. I dropped some shit on it, but this shit is so nice. Like I'm so pumped for this. So anyways, I digress. Uh, yeah, I want to get off that subject. So over here are your seals. So here are the two rubber seals and they are different. So because this is a VVTi motor, uh, the seals are different. Uh, they're the same length. So I have some people think because the one valve cover looks shorter. No, the, the actual seals are the same length. The seals go all up, but the one for the VVTi side, which is this one here, has a wider top part. So this, see how this neck is like wider up here versus this one, if I put them, hold on, side by side. See how much wider this is at the top? Uh, when I take the valve covers off, I'll show you here. Uh, the one is slightly wider for some reason. I'm not sure why they do it that way, but they do. I think it has to do with the VVTi cam gear there, um, but I'll show you here. Okay, so here's the two different gasket numbers. Here's the one for the VBTI side, and here's the one for the non-VBTI side. Just make sure it doesn't. So it's 11214. Sure, that light's getting me crazy there. 46011, and then we have 11213 46030. So those are the ones you need if you have a VBTI motor, guys, just to make your life a little bit easier. Sorry I didn't record it there. It's kind of hard just being myself um, to record it and uh, get that done. Okay, guys, so we've got the door panel off here already. Uh, we've taken the speaker out down here. Now we're taking off the plastic skin. This is a moisture barrier to keep it from coming inside the car. Because obviously here's your glass. 
Um, this goes down inside the door here. You can see the crash bar here. Uh, what we're doing next is we're gonna be taking off the mirror. There's going to be one clip you're gonna to wanna to remove, which I can't show you because it's up in here. Let's see if I can get my hand in there. Ah, come on. You're making a lot of work. There we go. One clip right there. One little press clip. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts um, that you need to undo. Actually staying in. Huh? Should it come out? Yep. Go ahead, pull it out. Yep. That's it. Look at that. So we've got Tony here, Stan Sager Media. You know what's up? What's good? What's, what's good? Up? What's good? Um, so guys, look. If you see here, it's only two 10 millimeter bolts and one plug. Pretty simple, right? Uh, these are USDM mirrors, so we don't have the auto. Got a little weight to them. Though, yeah, actually. the glass, I guess, inside of them, because they're actually glass mirrors. Oh but um, these aren't auto power. So in Japan, did you know they had auto fold mirrors in Japan? So you hit a button inside the car and it'll fold them in and out. Pretty like supers? Yeah. Sick. Some guys try to switch them in, but there's more wiring and I'm lazy yeah. piece of shit. So I'm not, that's not gonna happen. But that's one mirror off guys and we have to do the other side. But we also have to take the door handle on this. Uh, again, there's two 10 millimeter bolts that go in here. Now I've never taken the door handle out. I've done the mirrors before, but I've never done this. So this should be interesting. All right, Tony here. So we've made a little progress on this door. We found that you have to take this plate off, let it dangle a little. Because basically, you need to get access through this way to right here where the handle was. There's the lock mechanism and such. You basically had to have a angled pair of needle nose. We had to get inside here to release the linkage. And um, that gave us a little bit of trouble because it's literally a very tight fit. And then you have to, once you get the plastic keeper squished in, then you have to somehow get it off. So it's almost like a two man job. So. And then here is obviously the mirrors and the handles. So if you see here where that hole is, right there, mm -hmm. that's where there's like that plastic keeper that goes through that was giving us all the trouble. And then we did find that the driver's side was different. Or well, go ahead. I thought it was different, but it has the same things on both sides. I'm thinking that again, that was the side that was wrecked. There's just so much stuff missing. I think they forgot to even put this back in or whatever it did just wasn't there. It's probably dangling down inside the door somewhere. But <laughs> you can see on this one, yeah. it just doesn't have it. So basically what he's talking about is there's a, sorry not to hmm. delay, but look, if you look here, and if it's interesting enough, Ryan, look, this one doesn't have the, the plastic pen. So if you see here, there's a plastic pen, ah. an arm that rides out. So basically when this handle's actuated, there's a micro switch inside that basically it's telling it, it knows the state of the handle basically. Which is funny because on mine, if I lock my car for like more than a day, then I come back and try to unlock my car from the driver's handle, my alarm goes off. I have to go around to my passenger handle on my Supra and lock and unlock the car. And that's the only way to not initiate my factory alarm. It's the dumbest thing ever. That sounds pretty fucking amazing. Pretty dumb. That's awesome. So now, what's next? Uh, we're gonna take out part of the interior. We gotta try to get that rear quarter glass out, which I'm not looking for. I've never taken these plastics out before and you can't break them. You cannot damage them. You cannot get this messed up. This is a, it's not fun. I'm not looking forward to this at all. The plastics is the worst part of any Supra. The plastics <laughs> suck. So yeah, I'm here guys mainly to uh, lend Ryan a hand and um, he's obviously helped me so much with my Super and so it's the best I can do. But um, it's super cool to get to do this. It kind of just dawned on me as we were working on it. I'm like, man, this is so cool because I've never taken my Super apart to this degree whatsoever. So I get to learn like it's as if this is my Super, you know, I get to like first hand. So pretty cool. All right guys, so we're on to the quarter glass now and Tony is removing some of the screws. So we have to move it from the back up. Uh, he already popped out the 
um, what do we call those again? Damn it, the seat belts. <laughs> popped out the seat belts too. Uh, he popped out the plastic up top there, so, but my understanding is you have to move from here and move your way up. I'm not sure if the seats have to come out. I guess the bottom cushion would. I'm not sure if this back upper piece has to or not. Um, this is uh, this is quite involved and this is really crappy design on Toyota's behalf. I'm not sure why you have to bolt that glass in, but apparently you do. I should be able to pull out from here. Now, I'm not a thousand percent sure. Ryan doesn't usually pull out though. So, no, I usually don't pull out. Just wanna make sure. It's, oh, they're supposed to separate. See, I don't wanna separate those panels if I'm not supposed to, I don't know. What about this? Trying to no, here. that's, I pulled that out before. Now, that can be. Hey. Oh. Careful. Because these plastics you cannot buy, period, end of story. You are fucked if you break these. We didn't break a single tab. Good. Look, I'm, look at this. Look at this face. That face of, I know what the fuck I'm doing. Hashtag Stance Stagger Media. Stances, Staggers, Medias. That's, that's, that's how Ryan would say it. Oh, seatbelt. It's pretty neat. What the hell's all back there? Is that the mechanism for the seatbelt? Yeah. People don't get to see this stuff, so this is cool. Oh, yeah, myself included, it's pretty cool. Plus, this shit. your camera could, could get it. Come on, get it. There we go. So, yeah, somehow. I just gotta unbolt this. Oh, dude, look at the screws. I can see here. why it can't come out. Look at the screws right there. Yep, that's all we needed to get to them. Yep. So, there's no way it could have came out. One okay, piece. so uh, do you want to explain that to the people real quick? So, here? yeah, so. Ah. So, you can see this side. This whole panel is still in. Okay, we're trying to obviously get all the plastic out so that the glass can be removed. So this is obviously two separate pieces. There's screws down here, down here, all the way up this piece. Screw, screw, screw. So basically, we found that you had to take out the whole bottom seat and then the whole back seat, which gave us access to the last two screws. Oh, so we're in the process of still figuring out how to get this all the way out. So I believe you just got to take this bolt out here, which will allow the seatbelt to go through this piece of plastic here. And then we've already taken these two screws out. So after these two and that and the seatbelt, it's pretty, pretty good. So Boca is here. Colton is here. And Ryan is Keystone. Drinking. We have yet to start drinking yet. Ryan's always got to jump on this. Yeah, always. All right, update. We got the top panel off. As you can see here, because this car had been in a collision, this is where some of this bodywork has been tack welded in. And here's the glass. And uh, as you can see, if it's a, as you can see here, here's a stud. It's actually missing a nut. There's a stud here with a nut and a stud here. I hate you so much. It looks like he's ready to go hunting. Yeah, hey, you going hunting, Tony? Well, they told me, Ryan, I said, Ryan, where do you live? He said, I live in Bumfuck with a bunch of country fuckers. So I said, let me try to fit in. <laughs> I mean, you do fit in very nicely. Very nice. You got your Milwaukee in back. a little too straight, so I got to I mean, true. Yeah, well, let me knock one or two of those out for you real quick. And then you definitely fit into Waynesboro, Pennsylvania. Come on. <laughs> all right, so we're on the other side, and I want to go a little more detail. So once you have all the screws out, it's going to feel weird, but you pull basically from the very bottom, pop, you'll feel the pop, and then there's basically four clips that shoot into this upper panel. So you're basically going to want to pry slowly from front to back. You already popped one, and here's some more. There they go. Those three just did all at the same time. And then... That you have to fish. Hold on me. There you go. Now Tony's going to hand that back to me. Got it. I'll pull this out. You see the other one's already sitting over there. Now Tony, what are you doing next here? So to get this upper panel off, they give you this little feature here. After you've obviously already unbolted the seatbelt, we had to do that before we took the lower panel off. Basically, once we undo a couple screws that are holding this panel out, we'll be able to feed this whole setup through this panel, it'll stay and live there until we go to reassemble the car. All right, Tony's taking off the last piece now. It's the very top piece. Just a couple more clips, just like the bottom. Like I said, feed that through. And that's 
it. That's it. Thank you. That's all the rear plastics, guys. I mean, that's all the plastics in the car. Really, there's none. Le there's nothing left. I mean, the rear subwoofer. I've got all the door panels off. I've even got the front plastics off now. And let me, let me <laughs> this show the sweet sound system. Yeah, this is uh. Bro, you're not used to that bass. You just don't know. You're not about that life. You're not about oh, that life. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, they do boom, absolutely boom. nothing. <laughs> nothing. All right, guys. So Tony's taking out this, uh, the bolts. Is there three on this side? The that side didn't have yeah, any. These hey, are different size. Different size. Oh my god! I bet they're actual tens. Yeah. These are so eights. those are eights. Yeah, that side's been removed. That's how we know for sure. Fuck. Son of a beast. So guys, again, this this side's been wrecked, and this glass was replaced at one time. So that shows that. So let me get you a ten mil. Do you have it? Uh, negative Ghost Rider. Negative Ghost Rider. So what? Well, uh, I've got a short well ten. I don't have for that little quarter. So it's somewhere around here. Let me see the camera. And you know, I want to explain something too. So you see, like, how we're saying here, this side's been replaced. Well, you can obviously see because look at all the rust you see. So what this rust is from is from poor craftsmanship, poor bodymen. A good bodyman will make those welds to retack that panel in, and then they'll use a carnauba wax or some kind of, not carnauba wax, goddammit, that's a wax that you put... But you know what I'm saying? There's some form of wax or sealant so there's rust can't form. I mean, look at this. This is a factory. And obviously there's not a fucking lick of rust. Because in the factory there's quality control. So um. it makes a big difference. This is why I'm so picky about bodywork. That's why I like Travis so much. Yeah, and people think that it's not important. I mean, I guess if that's not important to you, maybe that's not important. But for a car that's, you know, 30 years older, you want to keep as a collectible, you obviously want to We'll be fixing all that. That'll be fixed. Or or no, for example, if you just drill a hole in your your car in general. Yeah. If it's not sealed with something, that's going to rust. Yep, one thousand percent. Eventually. Yeah, that's what has me so worried about the uh, the rear trunk mount the, for the battery. I'm like, dude, when I drill, I have to put seal it. Something's got to go there. It has to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because because uh, we live in humid area. We don't live in a dry area. Right. And in... it's hard to explain. So if you live in like Arizona, or something like that, obviously it's not a problem for y'all. But here, where it's like wet, like in the wintertime, like I've seen my garage, like literally the stuff in my garage will get wet from the humidity change. Like it'll go from like real dry to real wet. And you'll see it literally, your inside your garage will get wet. It's fucking so weird. And it was interesting too, uh, when we were taking these door panels off, there's like a plastic liner, and the plastic liner is basically like a vapor slash moisture barrier from the cabin to keep humidity out of the cabin for those exact same reasons like we're talking about. So it's, it's pretty interesting. Like honestly, you're not going to find that on a race car because they don't give a shit, but like on a car that's a factory car i thought that was pretty cool i've seen plastic indoors before never really understood what it was for and like most people have probably in my time ripped a bunch of it out but now i'm like damn moisture barrier, it actually bro. has a it actually has a, a function Perfect. all right guys so we're moving the seal on the back here and a good way to know where to put this back because it's just one giant uh shape i mean it doesn't there's no end to beginning all uh, you have to take the center of this and that is actually where this begins here for this latch so use that as your centering point when you put this all back together so all you're doing now is literally Pulling up and pulling it out. Now we can preserve this piece because, as you can see, it's massive. Look at that. Let's pop out that bitch in there. Look at the difference. Sorry, bud. Your drag setup right there. <laughs> Cheapest way. I got one of my Yeah, that'd be a fair race, Ryan. You put these, find a second one, put it on that, and then you can race Polka with regular size. Yeah, da, 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 da. yeah. <laughs> no, your green track control is going to hate you. Like, I don't know what to do. I'm new. <laughs> I'm new. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> That's funny, but. Polka, why don't you want to get fast? Polka says he doesn't want to go fast. Do you guys hear this? He says he doesn't want to go fast. Why is that, Mike? No answer. It's Mike, just put a freaking 200 oh, shot on it. Let's just get it over with. Going to the roof. Just put I mean, 200 shot, and you don't have to do any more mods. We'll leave you alone. Fair? Is that put fair? Put a fake intercooler in the front. Good to go. We'll need an intercooler for nitrous. Yeah, we'll just go. We'll go to the nearest house that's been foreclosed on. We'll cut the coil out of their AC unit, and we'll just stick that up front. It'll look like an intercooler. That'll get us by. <laughs> Fuck it. And then just 200 shot. 
<laughs> and we'll get you a little compressed air can to make it sound like a blow valve if you really want to show off. <laughs> this is amazing right now. There goes a sight from my soul. I, 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 I,